Hello everybody, this is Jeff Jeunesse, and welcome to our second optional lab exercise in our exploration of symbolization in cartography in ArcGIS. In this short exercise, we're going to see how we can perform mathematical operations in our labels. In other words, we can actually calculate something based on multiple attribute fields and have the label report the results of that calculation. Now we construct labels in the Expression Builder tool. We use one of four languages, and because of this, we can take advantage of the mathematical operators in those languages to perform mathematical functions on attribute values. Then we can report the results in the label. Now, for example, the state's feature class is attributes that give the total population in 2010 and also gives the population in various age classes in 2010. One of those classes is the age 18 to 21 group, and so if we want it, we could divide the age 18 to 21 population by the total population to get the proportion of each state in that age class. Then our labels would look like this. And of course, we could do all the text formatting on this that we saw in the previous lab exercise where you can change colors and fonts and all that. And this lab demonstration, I'm going to be using ArcGIS Pro version 3.3.1. Now we're going to try this out on the states feature class because that has all those attribute fields with the different age classes. So let's add that to a new map. It's in additional data, additional FGDB states. Just going to right click and go add to new map. Okay, let's zoom in. If you've never done it, you can hold the shift key down and draw a box and that will zoom into a map in ArcGIS. All right, here's our states. So if we open up the attribute table, we'll see that we do have attributes such as state name. We have population 2010. This is the population of each state. And then off to the right, we have populations in various ethnic groups. We have populations in males versus females. We have populations in different age classes. We even have median ages of males, females, and just in general. So what we're going to do in this exercise is we're going to take this value, the age 18 to 21 class, we're going to divide it by the total population to get the proportion of 18 to 21 year olds in each state. And of course, if we ever wanted to, we could have just created a new attribute field and calculated that value directly into it. And then we could have just made the label on that field. But with this lab exercise, I want you to see how you can do it directly in the Label Expression Builder. Now this is kind of similar to what we were doing earlier when we were playing around with text formatting tags and building expressions off of multiple attribute fields. It's a little more complicated though because the mathematical functions that are available in the different languages are just all formatted differently. Each language has their own approach to it. So you kind of have to become comfortable with the language before you can really get this to do what you want. In this lab exercise, if you look in the lab document, I am calculating this particular value, the uh, proportion of 18 to 21 year olds, and I'm giving you examples in the four languages that ArcGIS Pro offers. So you can look close and see, see exactly how I do it. But we're doing it in Arcade, we're doing it in J script, we're doing it in VB script, and we're doing it in Python. So all of those are examples in the document. And if it helps any, I've got the name of the language I'm discussing up here in the upper right corner. And in all of these examples, we're going to see how to multiply attribute values, we're going to see how to divide them, we're going to, and we're going to see how to round off to two decimal places so that we, we get a proportion value. All right, so let's start with Arcade. We select our layer, we hit Labeling, Come to the Expression Builder. Let's open that up. Right now it's all set to go to show us the state name. Now we're going to want to add a line break to this. So first off we have to do a plus and a, that backslash in gives us a line break. Okay, now it gets a little trickier. We're going to take the 18 to 21 year olds. That's this. This part will pull that value out. Then we're going to multiply that by 100. So we'll get a number that ranges between 0 and 100 rather than 0 and 1. So multiply by 100, then divide by the total population. That's this one. Let's stretch this out a little bit. So this portion will perform the calculation, but we want to round it all off to two decimal points. So let's use the arcade round function. It's just round. Put it in parentheses. 
this is the number that will be rounded. We put a comma and tell it how many decimal places we want. And then we're going to do it two and close the parentheses. If we check it now, we should see the state name appear with the proportion underneath. So let's see if that works. All right, so it's looking good so far. We just need to add in some text to kind of clean it all up. So we're going to say in here we'll do age 18 to 21 equals and then we'll add another text value here percent of population close that off check it looks valid hit apply and there we go just what we were hoping for all right so that's how you do it in arcade Let's take a look at VBScript. It's very similar, except VBScript uses different operators, and they identify the feature attribute fields differently. So let's just switch it over to VBScript. All right, this is how it identifies state name and the you know the various attribute fields. So we got the three fields in place right now. Um, VBScript doesn't use the slash n as a line break. It uses VBCRLF. stands for Visual Basic Carriage Return Line Feed. That'll give us a, a, a break. Then we're going to have the text age 18 to 21. Then we got to do our mathematical operation here. So going to do 18 times 100 again, divide it by the total population. We'll put that in parentheses. And VBScript also uses the round function. So we do round, and then we can tell it how many digits. And then we'll follow it up with, oh, oh my, uh, should have mentioned uh, they don't use VBScript does not use a plus to concatenate strings they use an ampersand so we're going to use an ampersand proportion of population okay and that should do it we'll check for errors oh looks like we forgot to put an ampersand here all right that ought to fix it up check that okay good let's see if it looks right Yep, looking good. All right, so that is how we would set it up in VBScript. Now let's take a look at JScript. JScript is very similar to JavaScript, but apparently there was some sort of licensing or trademark issue, and so Microsoft called it JScript instead of JavaScript. So let's just uh, switch over to that. Okay, JScript uses a plus sign to concatenate string values. I know they also use a slash n to get the line break. So let's get the 18 to 21. Now JScript has a round function and you should specify it with math.round, but JScript's version does not allow you to give the number of decimal places. You only give it a single number and it rounds to an integer. So that means if we want to get two decimal places, we're just going to have to kind of trick it and do it manually. So we're going to do math.round parentheses. Okay, instead of multiplying by 100 and dividing by the total population, we're going to multiply by 10,000 and then divide by the population and then this will be rounded off, but uh, by a, a factor of 100 too high. So we'll divide this total by 100, and then add the final text. Okay. Let's just put something in here so we know. All right, let's check that. It looks like a valid expression. Let's hit apply. Yep, so it worked again. All right, so the trick with JScript is that we had to get creative to get it to round of two decimal places. 
All right, one last example. We'll try this again in Python. Let's change this over to Python. Now, Python, the rounding function, again, lets us do the number of decimal places, so that's cool. So let's, and Python uses the plus to concatenate. We're going to use a slash n to get the line break. Get some text in there. Now, one weird thing about Python, though, is that it, it doesn't immediately, so it doesn't let us just take these numbers directly for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, we have to cast them to numbers. So you can cast them to either integer, you would do int, then put it in parentheses. That would take this value and turn it into an integer, or you could do it as float. That gives a floating point with decimals. So I'm going to use that. So float of this one times 100 divided by float of this number. Okay, so that'll give our number. Now we're going to round it. Put all this in parentheses. And then we have to take all of this and convert it to a text value using the str function. So a few more steps here. Let's make sure we got that formatted properly. Okay. All right, and then add the final text. Let's check and see if it's valid. Uh-oh, we failed to close something here. Let's see. Looks like we're missing one on the end there. Let's check that. All right, let's see if that works out. Yep, that got it. All right, so there you go. That's how you do it in all four languages. and. Uh, you can take advantage of all the mathematical operators that these languages offer, which is quite a few. So there's a lot you can do here. And if you really get into it, you can hit the little advanced function and you can write separate little functions in your language here. And your primary thing will then call different functions that you've written. So yeah, you can get pretty sophisticated with this. All right, that should do it. Thanks so much, everybody. Appreciate you taking part in this. Bye-bye.